Now, we know that um, the building of a local global communication network based on the internet has transformed communication. That's obvious. Uh, and therefore, any major transformation of the technology and organization of communication is fundamental for social change. And over the last four decades, the advent of the internet and wireless communication networks have completely transformed uh, the way we communicate in society at large. And the fundamental transformation has been the shift from what I call uh, mass communication, what everybody calls mass communication, to what I call mass self-communication. This is from a system in which a message is sent from one to many with little interactivity, mass communication, to a system where uh, messages are sent from many to many, and so that the senders are receivers and receivers are the senders, and both uh, have access to a multimodal hypertext uh, that constitutes the endless changing backbone of the communication processes. This is the self, the mass self-communication. In short, internets and wireless networks. Power is based on the control and programming of communication networks. And counter power is based on the capacity to reprogram communication networks and reconfigure these networks to maximize the connection among social actors that challenge the dominant institutions and their networks. Power relationships have always been based on the control of communication and communication that, feel, <clears throat> that feed the neural, the neural networks that constitute our minds. And therefore, the rise of horizontal networks of communication has created a new landscape of social and political change by the process of disintermediation of governments and corporations in the control of the communication systems. Disintermediation is the key word. For instance, the one European movement that has prompted major political changes and in which the internet also played a decisive role and is playing the decisive role is Iceland. Iceland. Among other things, few people know that the Icelandic citizens are now writing a new constitution over the internet with a full participatory system after a project that was designed by 25 people elected by 850 people randomly selected from all over the country. And in the way toward this, they um, um, bankrupt all the Icelandic bank banks, nationalized the banks, renounced foreign debt, and sent the prime minister to jail. But also, in 2011, there have been absolutely powerful movements in Greece, in Portugal, in Israel, the largest social mobilization of Israeli history, and with less intensity in all the other West European countries, even in quiet, calm, detached England, um, as you can go to St. Paul's Cathedral and you see that they're still there. They are still there. And in all cases, there is a connection between the internet and wireless networks, and also the mass media in different forms feeding into each other and amplifying and connecting the movement locally and globally. But these particular movements that we are talking about had been successfully able to challenge the power of the state and of capital for the time being through the processes that I am describing in which the internet and wireless communication do play a major role. Without this technology, as movements as they have happened would not have happened. But this is not a technology. It's deeper sources. But it is not either simply a technology as a tool. It's technology as a cultural construction because it's a technology of free communication. It's a technology of freedom coming from a culture of freedom designed by a culture of freedom. 